I'd like to start by thanking the organizer, and I uh, I feel it, uh, impossible not to mention also uh, Alexander Abushi, our friend and colleague. Uh, it's uh, mainly because of uh, him that uh, this initiative got started, and that's one of the main reasons why we are all here. And I would also like to thank uh, very much uh, Tino Segal for his generosity in, in presenting his, his work to a discussion by people like me uh, that <laughs> shouldn't be, in principle, entitled to speak of art uh, because we are dealing with the nuts and bolts uh, of the body, so to speak. Uh, yesterday, uh, it was a very rich day, uh, both at the Biennale, but also uh, in Palazzo Pisani. Particularly, uh, the experience uh, we all had in the dark was uh, reminding me of uh, another experience I had a few years ago in Cortona during a workshop uh, led by an Austrian sculptor uh, who invited us to walk, led by someone who was sighted, uh, on the streets of Cortona to explore the void between uh, uh, buildings and explore space by relying not on vision but uh, uh, on uh, the other senses like proprioception, uh, the auditory system, smell and the like. Um, I wish I could uh, run a course on cognitive neuroscience using your <laughs> work would be much more entertaining because I found a lot of uh, uh, stimuli, uh, um, watching your enacted sculpture and reading about uh, your work. Uh, I see um, uh, one uh, very important element is the transcendental nature of the body. The body is the pivotal entity uh, which enables us to entertain the idea of space and time and I, I find it uh, a very evident in your work. A second element is the situated nature of our cognition and uh, this is also naturally linked to your work because uh, the specificity of the situation put into question a lot of uh, things we normally take for granted starting with uh, our personal relationship uh, that we entertain with our body so uh, bringing a body, a series of human bodies that are asking questions to our body in a specific context in a way, changes dramatically the perception we have uh, of ourselves, which leads to a further point, which I found quite uh, interesting in your in your work, in your artistic work, namely the parallel uh, uh, between uh, uh, the relationship uh, that uh, is instantiated by uh, the people that uh, uh, enact your work and the viewer, and the parallel is uh, uh, with the way we form our personal identity, which is always uh, uh, the outcome of uh, a negotiation, uh, and this negotiation is made possible by the situated nature of our uh, interpersonal relationship played at the level of the body. So we see a further instantiation of the fact that art is a sort of magnifying lens uh, which puts into question where is the cavern? Uh, what is a cavern? Uh, um, uh, I have the impression that the more we study the brain, the more um, the boundary between what we take to be the real world and the world of, uh, of fiction, of narrative, uh, uh, looks more and more a blur to me. And, and I think that art is constantly reminding us of, of, of this element that we are, in a way, rediscovering in a much more uh, uh, prosaic uh, uh, and more expensive way, <laughs> because we use very expensive machines. Uh, the last thing I would like to, um, to address here is uh, uh, the notion of object. So the idea is, uh, if I got it right, that um, somehow conceptual art feels the burden of the <coughs> object in itself and tries to uh, provide uh, an artistic uh, uh, object uh, which is immaterial, which is really material on, on a way because uh, it materializes in the human body, but just because the human body is constantly changing, you, you are not able to uh, somehow uh, uh, fix 
uh, that body in, in a permanent snapshot because the body is inherently dynamic and linked to the temporal and, and spatial manifold uh, that um, is a feature uh, characterizing the way we experience uh, uh, the world. But I would like to add that, on the other hand, what we are discovering is that there is no material object, for example, those bottles on the table, the table itself, the chair, or uh, the glass filled with water, that can be uh, uh, uniquely and exclusively defined uh, in its uh, uh, material form, because every object uh, leads back to a potential practognosia, I'm using uh, at will uh, a notion uh, of Merleau-Ponty, so there is always a body in the object. So I think you can simply use a material object as well <laughs> without losing track of the body. Right?